Okay, so next speaker is uh, Tetsuya Hashimoto, and uh, the title is Upper Limits on Einstein's Weak Equivalence Principle Placed by Uncertainty of Dispersion Measure of First Radio Birth. So please start. Okay, uh, nice to meet you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk about our recent paper. Uh, thank you very much for introduction. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Upper Limits on Einstein's Weak Equivalence Principle using the uh, dispersion measure of first radio burst. Uh, I am Tetsuya Hashimoto from National Jonshin University in Taiwan. And then today's my talk is based on this publication, uh, which was in last year. And then these people are co-authors of this paper. So let me get started. Uh, first of all, just in case, uh, let me show one uh, easy movie so that we can imagine uh, what first radio bus is. So this is, you know, uh, just a typical example of optical image of our sky. And then, okay, this is a movie. How can I, it doesn't work. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then, of course, you can switch to the radio frequency, right, using radio telescopes. Uh, to see the universe in radio frequency. And then if you switch to radio, the universe looks very different. And as you can see, uh, the most different part is this the kind of, there are so many fireworks in radio wavelengths in the universe. So now we notice that if we go to the very short time scale, which is say millisecond time scale, now there are so many new objects in the universe that no one noticed before. So this is so-called the first radio burst. And I believe that this is the frontier of astronomy in the next decade. So today I'm going to talk about this first radio burst. And then as you may know, first radio burst, FRB is a kind of radio pulse which is coming from extra galaxies. And then this is one of the imaginary pictures of first radio burst. And then there's a galaxy here this is say host galaxy of FRB and the FRB happens within the galaxy and then this can reach the, uh, our Milky Way. Then we can detect this radio signal. <clears throat> the typical time scale of this radio signal is only millisecond. This millisecond is very short in astronomy. Therefore, this is really new. But this radio signal is very bright which is comparable to the one Jansky, uh, typically. This one Jansky is very bright in radio astronomy. Therefore, uh, this is getting a lot of attention recently. So the one of the reasons of that is that we recently have two game changers. So one is CHIME, another is FAST. So CHIME is Canadian radio telescope. Uh, first is the world largest uh, single dish radio telescope in China. So this figure shows the number of FRBs per year as a function of year. And then before 2020, actually number of detected FRBs are more or less uh, 20 or several tens of FRBs per year before 2020. But after 2021, uh, game changers have arrived why is the chime and another is the past? These two telescopes uh, keep detecting more than thousand of FRBs. This number thousand is about two order of magnitude more than before. Therefore, now uh, many people started to pay attention to this fast radio burst. And it is also time to use fast radio burst to perform kind of uh, precise science using fast radio burst. And then, oh, this is just an introduction on first radio burst. And the first radio burst, I would say that first radio burst are kind of special in astronomy. I believe that this is the only astrophysical source which will allow us to address many key sciences in physics and astronomy, including, for example, dark energy and missing baryon problem, uh, testing general relativity, cosmic ionization, and dark matter, all of these things are expected to be addressed by using fast radio bursts in future. 
Therefore, uh, before using this partial reverse as a useful tool to address key sciences, we have to understand what FRB is. So, but still we don't know that what FRB is, the origin of FRB is. Therefore, debating the origin of FRB is getting central in astronomy and physics now. <clears throat> so today's my talk uh, is focused on this testing generativity part. But actually, for this purpose, actually we don't really need to understand exactly the origin of FRBs. We can use partial radio bus to constrain the general relativity assumption, one of assumptions in the general relativity. <clears throat> so let me talk about this one. And then I have to hesitate to mention about this one uh, in front of the expertised people, but let me simplify the history. So uh, as you know, so Newton actually proposed a Newtonian mechanics, uh, which is great. So basically Newton, so this can describe uh, many things. But one experiment, this microsom mole experiment, revealed that the speed of light in the vacuum is always constant. So this is observation experimental evidence. So this result cannot be explained by using Newtonian mechanics. Therefore, this uh, microsom mole experiment to measure the speed of light actually initiated the idea of general relativity uh, proposed by Albert Einstein. Then now many people, uh, physical people, uh, try to find new theory beyond the general relativity. <clears throat> so if you find something beyond the general relativity, it would be a great discovery in century. Therefore, it is now good timing to go back to testing the speed of light again. Then uh, I let me emphasize that this past radio burst FRBs are really useful to accurately measure the speed of light in the universe. So uh, let me talk about one of assumptions uh, in the general relativity. Uh, in GR, uh, there is a statement. Uh, uh, sorry, this, this is this is a Einstein's weak equivalence principle WEP. So this is a statement that the speed of light of uh, two different photons with different frequencies are exactly the same under the same gravitational potential. So therefore, uh, in short, a general relativity assumes C1 equal exactly equal to C2 at different frequencies, nu1 and nu2. Uh, I think this makes sense, but uh, it is very important to test uh, if this assumption uh, is really the case or not. <clears throat> if this uh, Einstein's weak equivalence principle is violated, I mean, if speed of light is not exactly the same, then we may expect the time lag between different frequencies when detect uh, astrophysical sources. <clears throat> because speed of light are different for different frequencies. Therefore, we expect a time lag between different frequencies in this case. <clears throat> so let's check these things using fast radio bus. So fast radio bus is actually ideal laboratory to test this WEP violation because uh, fast radio bus uh, travels a very long distance. This is a cosmological distance. And when it arrives, we eventually measure the millisecond time scales which is very short. Therefore, it's like a, a marathon. So uh, if you measure it for long distance, uh, you can accurately measure, constrain the speed of light. Therefore, the FRB is really useful to constrain uh, this WBP violation. And then I here show the one example of typical detection of fast radio burst, which is shown by a tilt line here. This figure is observed frequency in y-axis as a function of observed time. This is a typical detection. And then actually when we detect FRBs, there is time lag between different frequencies. But this observational time lag is actually uh, explained by plasma effect only. Say uh, this radio signal from extra galaxy uh, go uh, coming from extra galaxies. Therefore, uh, when this radio emission goes through the intergalactic medium, 
uh, intergalactic medium is basically ionized. Therefore, when this radio emission goes through the plasma in intergalactic space, uh, speed of light change. Then this dependency on frequency is well known, which is uh, inverse square law. Therefore, basically distilled observational time lag between different frequencies uh, can be explained by using only this plasma effect. This well fit. So in this sense, uh, if WEP is violated, the, this violation has to be uh, within the observational uncertainty of FRBs. Otherwise, we should be able to detect a significant deviation from this inverse new square law observationally. But in reality, we don't really see that kind of uh, significant deviation from observations. Meaning that if there is WP violation, that signature should be smaller than observational uncertainty. So this is our idea here. <clears throat> and then uh, when people try to constrain this WEP violation uh, in this field, I think they usually use this delta gamma parameter. Uh, gamma is defined for each photons with different frequencies. And the gamma two minus gamma one can be parameterized as this form. Uh, basically, this equation is saying that this delta gamma parameter can be constrained from this term first. This one is a, a observed time lag of FRBs between uh, different frequencies. Uh, then by removing the time lag due to the plasma effect. So there is observation time lag, and then you remove this plasma effect, then remaining things uh, should be the upper limit on the, uh, this uh, WP violation. This is a basic idea. And also there's a factor here, uh, including the distance to the source. Therefore, <clears throat> if, you, if you can use very distant astrophysical source, then you can automatically get a very small number on the upper limit on this data gamma value. And then in our paper, I think this is the most a, a new part in our paper. So as for this term, uh, we use this observational uncertainty of the arrival time. This is coming from observational uncertainty of dispersion measure. So dispersion measure is a distilled. So when try to fit distilled, uh, there is always observational uncertainty. So which corresponds to the uncertainty of arrival time of FRBs. Therefore, if um, WAP is violated, that signature has to be smaller than observation uncertainty of arrival time. So we use these things in our paper to get a stronger constraint. This part is a new part in this paper. <clears throat> and then let me show the example. So here I show the delta gamma parameter in Y axis. Say, if WEP is not violated, uh, w, uh, sorry, gamma one is exactly the same as gamma two, equal one minus one, equal zero, if WEP is not violated. But actually what we can do is we put the upper limit on this delta gamma parameter, then which is shown in Y axis here. This is upper limit on delta gamma in log scale as a function of observed frequency. <clears throat> and then using our method to this one, uh, our data point is shown by red dots in this diagram. And the black markers indicate the constraints from the previous papers. Then as you can see, because this is the upper limit, therefore smaller is better basically. And as you can see, our red point here, maybe around here, is about uh, three order of magnitude better than previous works. So this is actually the most accurate test in this subject uh, than ever. So we got three order of magnitude better uh, accuracy uh, on this WAP violation test using fast read burst. And then, uh, as you can see, this we use uh, this old FRB catalog, which is so-called FRB cat. This is still old. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning, recently uh, there are so many FRBs released by Chime Radio Telescope, this Canadian radio telescope. <clears throat> Then after I published this paper in 2021, actually our student, uh, Kaustu Basem from India, uh, he immediately applied uh, our new method using this one to the new time FRB data, uh, getting this orange constraint. 
this one. And then my previous constraint is shown by blue and the smaller is better. Then according to his uh, calculation, uh, he actually rewrote the most accurate uh, constraint by about one order of magnitude. So therefore he has kind of record holder in this subject now <laughs> using our unique method. Then this paper was also published. And then because of this impacts, uh, our two papers are actually featured by internet or media like this. So I think it's time to uh, summarize. So let me conclude my talk. So we propose a new method to constrain WEP by erosion uh, using, well, actually this is using uh, uncertainty of dispersion measure of FRBs. Uh, using this new method, we got the most accurate test done ever about WEP violation. Then the order catalog, uh, we got three order of magnitude better constraint. Then using new time FRB, uh, we get even one order of magnitude better constraint on the WEP violation. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's time for question and comment. So please raise your hand if you have any question. Okay, uh, Kamiya-san. Hi, thank you very much for very interesting talk. So could you back a uh, slide? Uh, uh, one more, one more. So what is the difference? Uh, so is there are many uh, points, red points, for example, with with the same uh, frequency? What is the difference between them? That is uh, event. Oh, OK, sorry, I, I forget to mention. So in this catalog, Actually, uh, there are many different FRBs, and then the each one dot corresponds to one FRB. Therefore, if you have two FRBs, two different FRBs, then you see the two data points here. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, usually we use the uh, same frequency to try to detect the FRBs. Therefore, we have the uh, same, how to say, of the, of, how to say, <laughs> FRB de detection at the same frequency range. So typically we use one gigahertz to detect the FRBs. Therefore, we see many data points at the same frequency here. What is the reason of the difference for each uh, each each event? Not ah. some condition. Mm. Ah, thank you very much. So basically, this difference between different FRBs comes from this one. Basically, uh, distance to the each FRB is different. Therefore, when we constrain this delta gamma parameter, basically the difference comes from here. And then another small difference comes from this part. Actually, this uncertainty, this is observational uncertainty of the arrival time of FRBs. So actually this uncertainty is measured for each FRB because sometimes we use different telescopes or sometimes FRB is very bright and then accuracy is better for bright FRBs. Therefore, this uh, term is also different for individual FRBs. Therefore, we get a different constraint on Delta Gamma for different FRBs. Then one FRB have one constraint. Therefore, we have many data points here. But actually, yes, uh, smaller is better. Therefore, basically, we can see a smallest uh, value here. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Any other question? Uh, we can accept a uh, shorter uh, question. So uh, we will have a uh, discussion session later, so you can uh, ask there.